if you've got a question uh, during the show, we want to hear it. Your input is a big part of what makes the show great. Um, and we thrive on your energy and insights, whether it is a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion. You just have to share. Don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make an absolute sure, if you want to make absolutely sure your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to do that. Use the super chat feature. Just click the dollar at the bottom of the chat box to send in your super chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead, let us know what you're thinking. Hit that super chat button and let's keep this show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to gsmcpodcast.net to tip, donate, and leave a question, to leave a comment or question there. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support and we're so thankful to have you as part of our community. We have to move on to talk about the expectations for Manchester United after signing Delict Delict in Mazrawi uh, to the football club. Uh, Manchester United, you know, it's going to be a tough season coming up for them after the disappointing season they had last season, not being able to make top four. Um, Getting, um, I believe they got 7th, 8th place last season with 18 wins, 6 draws, 14 losses, with 60 points. Not a good season for them overall. They had a minus 1 goal difference. And overall, you know, overall it was just not good enough. Um, from Manchester United, they were severely injury plagued throughout the season. P- players going on on key positions. All over the pitch, one of the more injury ravaged teams in the league, but they have, but they um, but they were able to win the FA Cup at the end of the season to kind of put some sort of cherry on top of not a good cake, but uh, on top of the cake to close off the season. Um, but overall, I will say Manchester United. They have a chance in this season to build off on some positive momentum over not only the FA Cup win, but over the fact that you, they've won, you know, since Ten Hag has came in, this is a club that's won two trophies in two seasons up to this point. So they have a chance to build some sort of momentum based on that, which they can use that to go on the positive sort of direction that this club is looking to do under this new Ineos footballing operations now going back though you know united haven't had the most strong transfer windows in general over this summer you know we expected you know major changes not just from players coming in but uh players going out uh uh uh, uh, players going out of the club and um They've gotten a little bit busy over the past few weeks, um, being able to sign the likes of of uh, Matias Delict, uh, Matias Delict, Mazrawi, uh, Lenny Yoro, which has been the big one, um, Joshua Zerksi, um, the Bologna player, and and they've also been able to let go of the likes of the Juan Bissakas. Um, one Bissaka mostly, uh, they you know they let go you know they I mean, they sold Mason Greenwood, f- um for a decent transfer sum, but um that one was not really a player that you know that was a player that they were forced to offload. They needed to get him out this this summer. We know the atmosphere and the temperature regarding that situation. We're not gonna touch it highly, but um yes. Yeah, so, but the main thing is they've been able to bring in a guy like Lenny Oro, and. And uh, Matias Delict that has potential, you know, alongside Lissandro Martinez to be a good, solid center back rotation there amongst those three. I think those three, there's some quality there. There's some ability there. They're all players that are comfortable playing out of the back. Um, they're all good defenders one on one. So I, I like what they've done there. Then you also have Harry Maguire and Lindelof just for extra, extra protection. 
one of those two would probably be, would be have let go would have been let go if Lenny Yoro did not get injured. Um, but now with Lenny Yoro being injured, I, you know they're probably gonna keep those two. But you have a solid core there. You're able to bring in Mazrawi um, that can provide as depth for download. So you so solve that right back issue. I think you're getting an upgrade in Mazrawi over Juan Bissaka in terms of one on one defending. Yes, Juan Bissaka is a you know you know decent but I think overall Mazarawi is a better player I think Mazarawi is better defending off the ball um, um, uh, as a pure marking his man let alone rather than just one-on-one -on -one defending which I think Juan Basaka maybe Juan Basaka has the advantage there but apart from that going forward it's not even close Mazarawi has really good ability he went up in the IX system um, uh, he's good in possession he can be the right back of a team that can dominate possession. Um, they're not going to be able to do what they, you know, what teams do with Juan Bissaka and give him time and space. You're not going to do that with Mazarawi because he has the ability to threaten you. I think the Xerxes deal is kind of a, because uh, he's another guy. He's another goal. He's another forward like uh, Rasmus Hoyland that has some pure talent in terms of there's some potential there you know with you know Rasmus Hoyland he has the ability to stretch has pace Xerxes has that real quality has that real threat and for him also play to be in going behind but doesn't get enough goals you know this is another player like Rasmus Hoyland that didn't get double digit goals you know he got uh, uh, Xerxes had nine goals in Bologna you know He's similar in terms of the there's there's not much production in terms of being able to get in the ball in the back of the net like Hoyland. So that's a major, major, major concern in the fact that the two forwards that United has right now are not proven goal scorers at any sort of level, let alone at this elite level. You know, you know, Hoyland, he didn't really take the, you know, he didn't really take the Serie A over in terms of his production in front of goal. Same thing with Xerxes. I think there's question marks there. I think there's question marks with the inconsistency of some of the players in the squad, specifically Marcus Rashford. When United are playing at their best, Marcus Rashford is at their best. When Man United are terrible, Marcus Rashford is terrible. Or maybe you could argue that out the other way around. When Rashford is at his best, United are, are really, really good. When Rashford is at his worst, not really, really bad. At the end of the day, you can't rely on whether or not Marcus Rashford is good form, not good form, you know, if he doesn't get off to the strongs, you know, if you, you know, if he doesn't get off to a strong, strong start to the season the same way he was able to get uh, a few weeks ago, uh, not a few weeks ago, uh, a year ago now, the past, the first season was Eric Ten Hag, you know, you got players like Ahmad and, and, and Garnacho that give you a little bit something different, that has ability there, Ahmad has a brilliant preseason, we know that what Garnacho can be. Rashford has not been good enough, you know. Sancho, he's still involved. He's still part of this team right now. He, he's still kind of in the doghouse with uh with uh, Eric Ten Hag, but specifically with Rashford, he has to be at that level or he should not be playing. So this question marks with the consistency of the front three in terms of the midfield. We saw the net what Casemiro, you know the down the the the. the not the downfall, because I think it's a little bit too early. It's a little bit too early to say downfall. I want to give him the season to see, you know, whether he can get back to form. Players are, um, you know, they're excused to one bad season here and there. At the end of the day, I thought Casemiro was really good in Ten Hag's first season. So I'm going to give him the benefit of that out there. And we're gonna, I'm going to wait for this season to really determine whether or not it's time for him to leave football, as other people have said. But, um... But there's question marks there with Casemiro if he's able to hold it down, if he's able to be, to, if he's able to be that composed conductor the way Rodri is for Manchester City. There's questions there based on what we saw last season. Um, uh, Mason Mount, him, another player, he just has not got into the, on the right foot since he's been at Manchester United. And again, the Community Shield, he was not good enough, didn't pick out the right balls, looked very unconfident. It was very alarming to see that sort of Mason Mount. Christian Eriksen, um, you know, he's getting a little bit older. There's some question marks in that midfield, and that midfield has not been a place that they have addressed in the transfer window. They've addressed the attacking side with Mazrawi, they addressed defensively with two center backs in Mazrawi. Um, but in part of the midfield, 
they need to they haven't addressed that and then also on top of that Onana, which Onana are we going to get? Are we going to get the Onana at Inter Milan that was one of the catalysts to lead that team into the Champions League final? Or are we going to get the Onana that we saw that first season at Manchester United? That was a mistake waiting to happen game in, game out. You know, what Andre Onana are we going to see? That's also another big question mark. Now, what are the reasonable expectations for Manchester United? I think reasonable expectations, you got to expect this team to reach top four. This is Manchester United at the end of the day. The pedigree amongst this club you want progression. This is third year at Eric Ten Hag. Usually the third year is when the managers are able to take their team to the next level. You should reasonably expect top four. I don't think you should expect much above that in the fact that they haven't drastically improved during the transfer window. They're suffering injuries again with Yoro being out for a few months, Hoyland being out for a few weeks. That same old story of United suffering injuries. So I don't think you can expect anything more than that. But apart from uh, in terms of, you know, Reasonable expect. I think you should expect top four. I think you should expect a good run in the Europa League. I believe they'll be playing in the Europa League because they won the FA Cup. Yeah, a good run in the Europa League. And then it's a really a way and see. It's interesting, you know. It's interesting to see if there's some sort of continuity and there's some sort of collective spirit that this team developed after the last season, the suffering they went through last season, being able to get a lot of their players back. Because Manchester United, they should automatically improve based on last season, just being able to get their players back. There's no way that they have the same sort of injury record that they had last season into this season. If that's this case, that's just extreme bad luck and really extremely bad luck for Ten Hag because, you know, he goes through the injuries he went through last season. He goes through them again this season. You know, 99%, he's not, he's not a man United manager. <laughs> He'll be sacked very, very soon throughout the season. And he's one of the, and his head is on the kind of the line. He's one of the main candidates to get sacked. So that's an interesting conversation to have. 